Welcome, dear viewers, to a heartwarming tale of unexpected love and family. Enjoy the story. Emily Wright wiped away a tear as she tried to calm the sobbing four-year-old girl on the hospital bed. Little Sophie had just received a painful injection, and no amount of coaxing seemed to soothe her. There, there, sweetie, Emily cooed, her mind racing for a way to distract the child. Suddenly, inspiration struck. She reached into her pocket and pulled out a crisp white handkerchief. With nimble fingers, Emily twisted the cloth into a funny little figure, a headless, armless man with a plump bottom and crooked legs. She made the figure waddle across the bed, its rear end wiggling comically. Sophie's sobs began to subside as curiosity took over. Her tear-stained eyes followed the cloth figure's movements. Oh my, who's crying here? Emily asked in a high-pitched voice, making the figure approach Sophie. The little girl giggled, her earlier distress forgotten. Such a brave girl deserves a treat, Emily declared, producing a small wrapped candy from her uniform pocket. Sophie's eyes lit up as she accepted the sweet. Just then, a flustered man burst into the room. Sophie, honey, I'm so sorry I wasn't here. I got caught up talking to the doctor and... He paused, taking in the scene before him. Oh, she's not crying anymore? Emily smiled reassuringly. We're all good here. Sophie's been very brave. The man's shoulders sagged with relief. Thank you so much. I'm David, Sophie's dad. I didn't realize she'd need me right after the injection. It's no problem at all, Emily replied. We've just been having a little fun with Mr. Handkerchief here. She made the cloth figure dance once more, eliciting another giggle from Sophie. David watched in amazement. You're wonderful with her. I don't suppose. Would you be willing to babysit Sophie sometime? I have some urgent business meetings coming up, and it would be for an hour or two at most. I'd pay you, of course. Emily hesitated. Well, I finish my shift in half an hour. I could stay with her then if you'd like. That would be perfect, David exclaimed. Thank you so much, miss. Emily, Emily Wright. Thank you, Emily. You're a lifesaver. As Emily finished mopping the hospital corridor later that evening, her mind wandered to Sophie and her father. There was something about the little girl that tugged at her heartstrings, and David seemed like a caring, if somewhat overwhelmed, father. When she returned to Sophie's room, David was ready to dash out the door. Emily, thank you again. I shouldn't be more than an hour or two. Sophie's already had dinner and she should be ready for bed soon. Emily nodded, settling into the chair by Sophie's bed. Don't worry, Mr. Thompson. We'll be just fine. As David left, Emily turned to Sophie with a bright smile. So, what shall we do now, sweetie? How about a story? For the next hour, Emily regaled Sophie with tales of princesses and dragons, played games of rock-paper-scissors, and listened attentively as the little girl recited nursery rhymes she'd learned in preschool. When David returned, he found Sophie fast asleep and Emily quietly tidying up the room. She's an angel, Emily whispered as David approached. David's face softened as he gazed at his sleeping daughter. She is. Emily, I can't thank you enough. Listen, we're being discharged in a few days. Would you be interested in babysitting regularly, just until I can find a permanent nanny? Emily's heart leaped at the opportunity. I'd love to, Mr. Thompson. Please, call me David. And here, let me give you my number. We can discuss details later. As Emily left the hospital that night, she couldn't help but feel that something significant had just happened. Over the next few weeks, Emily found herself spending more and more time with Sophie and David. Even on days when she wasn't officially babysitting, she'd pop into their hospital room during her breaks, drawn by Sophie's infectious laughter and David's warm smile. One evening, as Emily was helping Sophie build a tower of blocks, a nurse named Jessica poked her head into the room. Well, well, Emily Wright, I didn't expect to see you here on your day off, Jessica teased, her eyes twinkling mischievously. Emily felt her cheeks grow warm. Oh, you know, just helping out a bit. Jessica raised an eyebrow. Mm-hmm. Helping out the charming Mr. Thompson, I see. You know, he's quite the catch. Wealthy businessman, devoted father, and a widower to boot. Emily's eyes widened. Widower, I had no idea. Jessica nodded solemnly car accident two years ago. It's been just him and Sophie ever since. As Jessica left, Emily found herself looking at David in a new light. 
The sadness she sometimes glimpsed in his eyes made sense now. And little Sophie, growing up without a mother? Emily? Sophie's small voice broke through her thoughts. Can you sing me a lullaby? Emily smiled, pushing aside her musings. Of course, sweetheart. Let's get you tucked in. As Emily's soft voice filled the room with a gentle melody, she didn't notice David watching from the doorway. A look of wonder and something else. Something warmer in his eyes. The day of Sophie's discharge arrived, and Emily found herself feeling unexpectedly emotional. She had grown so fond of the little girl and her father over the past weeks. As David was packing up their belongings, he turned to Emily with a serious expression. Emily, I have a rather unusual request. Emily's heart skipped a beat. Yes? David ran a hand through his hair, looking uncharacteristically nervous. Well, you see, my parents are quite traditional. They've been pestering me to start dating again, worried about Sophie growing up without a mother figure. We're supposed to visit them this weekend, and I was wondering, would you consider coming with us? As... As my fiancé? Emily's jaw dropped. I... What? David hurried to explain. It would just be pretend, of course, just for the weekend. I know it's a lot to ask, but Sophie adores you, and I thought, well, it might get my parents off my back for a while. Emily's mind was reeling. This was certainly not what she had expected when she came to work this morning. But as she looked at David's hopeful face and thought of sweet little Sophie, she found herself nodding. All right, she said, surprising herself. I'll do it. David's face broke into a relieved smile. Really? Oh, thank you, Emily. You have no idea how much this means to me. As they left the hospital, Emily couldn't help but wonder what she had just gotten herself into. The next morning found Emily standing outside her apartment building, a small suitcase at her feet. She still couldn't quite believe she had agreed to this charade. A sleek SUV pulled up, and David hopped out to help with her luggage. Good morning, Emily. Ready for our little adventure? Emily managed a nervous smile. As ready as I'll ever be, I suppose. As they settled into the car, Sophie's excited voice piped up from the back seat. Emmy, you're coming with us to Grandma and Grandpa's house? Emily turned to smile at the little girl. That's right, sweetie. Your dad invited me along. Is that okay with you? Sophie nodded enthusiastically. Yeah, we can play dolls and you can tell me stories and... David chuckled as he pulled away from the curb. All right, Sophie. Let Emily breathe. We've got a long drive ahead of us. As they hit the highway, David glanced at Emily. I really appreciate you doing this, Emily. I know it's a bit... unconventional. Emily shrugged, trying to appear nonchalant. It's fine. Though I do wonder how we're going to explain to Sophie why we're suddenly engaged. David's eyes widened. Oh, right, I hadn't thought of that. He lowered his voice. Sophie, honey? Daddy needs to talk to you about something important. Sophie perked up. What is it, Daddy? David took a deep breath. Well, you know how Emily has been spending a lot of time with us lately? Well, Daddy and Emily have decided that we like each other very much, and we're going to get married. Emily held her breath, waiting for Sophie's reaction. To their surprise, Sophie merely nodded. Okay, can Emily be my new mommy then? Emily felt her heart constrict at the innocent question. David's knuckles whitened on the steering wheel. We'll see, sweetheart, he managed. For now, let's just enjoy our trip, okay? As Sophie happily returned to her coloring book, Emily and David exchanged a look. This weekend was certainly going to be interesting. After a long drive filled with sing-alongs, snack breaks, and the occasional game of I Spy, they finally arrived at David's parents' house. It was a charming two-story home with a well-manicured lawn and a wraparound porch. As they pulled into the driveway, Emily felt her nerves kick into overdrive. David, she whispered urgently, what if they don't like me? What if they see right through our act? David squeezed her hand reassuringly. They'll love you, Emily. Just be yourself. And remember, we've supposedly been dating for six months. Before Emily could respond, the front door burst open, and an older couple came hurrying out. There's my little princess, the woman cried, scooping Sophie up into a hug. David's father clapped him on the back before turning curious eyes to Emily. And who might this lovely young lady be? 
David wrapped an arm around Emily's waist, making her jump slightly. Mom, Dad, I'd like you to meet Emily. My fiancé. The silence that followed was deafening. Then, suddenly, David's mother let out a joyous squeal and pulled Emily into a bone-crushing hug. Oh, my dear, we've been waiting so long for David to find someone. I'm Margaret, and this is George. Welcome to the family. As Emily was ushered into the house, bombarded with questions about how they met and when the wedding would be, she caught David's eye. He mouthed a silent, thank you. And despite her nervousness, Emily found herself smiling back. The evening was going surprisingly well. Emily found herself genuinely enjoying the company of David's parents, and Sophie was in her element, showing off for her grandparents. As Margaret was regaling Emily with stories of David's childhood, the front door suddenly burst open. Mom! Dad! I'm home! A male voice called out. David's head snapped up, a look of panic crossing his face. Jake? What are you doing here? A young man, bearing a striking resemblance to David, sauntered into the living room. Surprise, I thought I'd drop in for the week. He stopped short, his eyes landing on Emily. Emily felt the blood drain from her face. Jake? Jake's expression morphed from shock to anger. Emily? What the hell are you doing here? David looked between them, confusion evident on his face. You two know each other? Emily stood up, her hands shaking. I... I should go. Oh no, you don't, Jake growled. You're going to explain what you're doing here with my brother when two days ago you were telling me you needed more time to think about my proposal? The room erupted into chaos. Margaret and George were demanding explanations. Sophie was looking around in confusion, and David was trying to calm everyone down. Emily took advantage of the commotion to slip out the front door, grabbing her coat as she went. She made it halfway down the street before she heard footsteps behind her. Emily, wait! It was David. She turned, tears stinging her eyes. David, I'm so sorry. I had no idea Jake was your brother. I should have told you I was seeing someone, but we were on a break and I just, I'm so sorry. David held up a hand to stop her. Emily, breathe. It's okay. Well, it's not okay, but it's not your fault. I'm the one who put you in this ridiculous situation. Emily wiped at her eyes. What a mess. I should go home. Please don't, David said softly. Come back to the house. We'll explain everything to my parents and, and Jake. Emily hesitated. Are you sure? David nodded. I'm sure. And Emily? For what it's worth, I'm glad it was you I asked to do this, even if it didn't quite go as planned. As they walked back to the house, Emily felt a glimmer of hope. Maybe, just maybe, something good could come out of this disaster after all. Back at the house, an awkward silence had fallen over the living room. Jake sat in an armchair, his jaw clenched, while Margaret and George perched uncertainly on the sofa. Sophie had been sent upstairs to play, shielded from the adult drama unfolding below. When David and Emily walked in, all eyes turned to them. David took a deep breath. Mom, Dad, Jake, we owe you all an explanation. Over the next hour, David and Emily took turns explaining the whole story, how they had met at the hospital, the pretend engagement, and their genuine, growing friendship. Jake listened in stony silence, his expression unreadable. When they finished, Margaret was the first to speak. Oh, David, why didn't you just tell us the truth? We only want you to be happy, dear. David ran a hand through his hair. I know, Mom. I guess I just... I didn't want to disappoint you. And then I met Emily, and she was so wonderful with Sophie, and I thought... Well, I don't know what I thought. George chuckled softly. Son... The only disappointment here is that you felt you needed to lie to us. But I think I understand why. All eyes turned to Jake, who had remained silent throughout the explanation. He stood up slowly, his eyes fixed on Emily. Emmy, he said softly, using the nickname he had given her when they first started dating. Why didn't you just tell me you weren't ready? Why all this? Emily felt tears welling up in her eyes. I'm so sorry, Jake. I care about you. I really do. But when I met Sophie and David, something just clicked. I didn't understand it at first, but now I think I do. She turned to David, who was watching her with a mix of hope and uncertainty. David, I know this whole thing started as a pretense. 
but somewhere along the way it became real for me. I love Sophie like she was my own, and I... I think I'm falling in love with you too. The room fell silent as everyone held their breath, waiting for David's response. David stepped forward, taking Emily's hands in his. Emily, he said, his voice thick with emotion. I think I've been falling in love with you since the day I saw you comforting Sophie in the hospital. I just didn't want to admit it to myself. Jake cleared his throat. Well, I guess that's that then. His voice was sad but resigned. I can't compete with true love, can I? Emily turned to him, her heart aching for the pain she had caused. Jake, I'm so sorry. You deserve someone who loves you completely. Jake nodded, a small smile tugging at his lips. Yeah, I do. And so do you, Emmy. If it can't be me, I'm glad it's my brother. Just be happy, okay? As Jake left the room, Margaret wiped tears from her eyes. Well, this certainly wasn't the weekend we expected. But I think it's turned out rather wonderfully, don't you think, George? George nodded, pulling his wife close. Indeed it has, my dear. Indeed it has. Six months later, the Thompson house was once again filled with family and friends. But this time there was no pretense, no lies, only joy and love. Emily stood in front of a mirror, adjusting her white dress nervously. A soft knock at the door made her turn. Emmy? Sophie poked her head in, looking adorable in her flower girl dress. Are you ready? Daddy's waiting. Emily smiled, her heart full of love for this little girl who had become her daughter in every way that mattered. I'm ready, sweetheart. Let's go make your daddy the happiest man in the world. As Emily walked down the aisle, her eyes locked with David's. His face was alight with love and happiness, mirroring the joy she felt in her own heart. Sophie skipped ahead, scattering rose petals with enthusiasm. In the front row, Margaret dabbed at her eyes with a handkerchief, while George beamed proudly. And there, standing beside David as his best man, was Jake. Despite the initial heartbreak, the brothers had worked through their issues, their bond stronger than ever. As Emily reached the altar, David took her hands in his. You look beautiful, he whispered, his voice thick with emotion. The ceremony was simple but heartfelt. When it came time for the vows, David cleared his throat and began. Emily, when you first came into our lives, I thought I was asking you to play a role. Little did I know, you would become the missing piece of our family puzzle. You brought laughter back into our home, love into my heart, and a mother's warmth to Sophie. I promise to cherish you, support you, and love you more each day than the day before. Emily blinked back tears as she started her own vows. David, from the moment I met you and Sophie, something just felt right. What started as a pretend engagement has become the most real and beautiful thing in my life. I promise to stand by your side through all of life's adventures, to be a loving mother to Sophie, and to fill our home with love and laughter every single day. As they exchanged rings and were pronounced husband and wife, the chapel erupted in cheers. Sophie rushed forward, throwing her arms around both of them. We're a real family now, she exclaimed, her face beaming with joy. David scooped her up, including her in their embrace. We've always been a real family, sweetheart, he said, kissing her cheek. Emily just made us complete. At the reception, as they swayed to their first dance as a married couple, Emily couldn't help but marvel at the journey that had brought them to this moment. Penny for your thoughts, Mrs. Thompson, David murmured, pulling her closer. Emily smiled up at him. I was just thinking about how sometimes the most unexpected twists in life lead us exactly where we're meant to be. David nodded, his eyes twinkling. Like a headless cloth man leading to a happily ever after? Emily laughed, remembering the day it all began. Exactly like that. As the evening wore on, Emily found a quiet moment with Jake. Thank you for being here, she said softly. It means the world to us. Jake smiled, genuine happiness in his eyes. I wouldn't have missed it for the world, Emmy. You two are perfect for each other. And besides, he added with a wink, someone's got to be the cool uncle to that little munchkin. Emily hugged him tightly, grateful for his forgiveness and support. Later, as David and Emily prepared to leave for their honeymoon, they found Sophie looking a bit teary-eyed. What's wrong, sweetheart? Emily asked, kneeling down to the little girl's level. I'm just so happy, Sophie sniffled. But I'll miss you while you're gone. 
David joined them, wrapping an arm around each of his girls. We'll miss you too, princess, but we'll be back before you know it, and then we'll have a whole lifetime of adventures together. Emily nodded, adding, And when we get back, how about we start planning your adoption party? Because I'd love nothing more than to officially become your mom. Sophie's eyes lit up. Really? You mean it? With all my heart, Emily assured her. As they drove away, waving to their family and friends, Emily felt a sense of completeness she had never known before. From a chance encounter in a hospital room to a family built on love and trust, their journey had been unexpected, but perfect in its own way. David reached over, taking her hand in his. Ready for our next adventure, Mrs. Thompson? Emily squeezed his hand, her heart full of love and excitement for their future. Always, Mr. Thompson, always. And as they drove off into the sunset, Emily knew that sometimes the most beautiful love stories are the ones we never see coming. Their pretend engagement had blossomed into a real and lasting love, proving that sometimes fairy tales do come true, just not always in the way we expect.